Ruling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be. Because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising flood waters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707 764 2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. And you call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of new world order resistance, High-profile court cases in the news. And interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. You can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting, uh, either through my website, emailrevealer.com, or you can email me directly at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. If you like our show, be sure and check out our Patreon. We've been building up the Patreon. It's taken off like a, a rocket. 
Uh, eight hours of exclusive content every month, plus the old member section stuff goes up there as well, and plus the shows like you're hearing right now, but ad free. Okay, with no none of the ads that everybody loves to complain about. Our archives are always free. You go to Spreaker.com, you sign up for free. You get about seventeen hundred hours of content up there. I'm really excited about our show today because we have an old friend of the show. She interviewed me on her show when she was doing a radio show. A New York City comedian running for mayor of New York City. You can go to Stacy. Prussman at Twitter. Follow her there or prussman dot com. Stacy Prussman, are you there? Yes, I am here, live and uh, and intact. Hopefully, so yes, I'm here. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. Well, tell, remind the audience who is Stacy Prussman. Well, I'm. Uh, I come from a comedic background. Uh, actually, theater acting was my first career, and then I went into stand up comedy. But I still obviously did acting it all goes together and then um i also became a motivational speaker and an activist and now i am running for mayor and i'm a good person <laughs> most of the time i, I think i could testify <laughs> to that part okay now what about um lifelong new yorker i lived i i was born in brooklyn i lived in almost all the boroughs and i live in brooklyn now, currently and uh, i've this, been in this city my entire life since I'm a baby, I've never actually left the city except to go to college. And then I moved into Manhattan. Then I moved to Brooklyn, Queens, back to Brooklyn, back to Queens, back to Manhattan. Back. <laughs> so I've li- literally, literally lived in every borough. I worked in the Bronx for a while doing a TV show. Um, what else can I tell you about my New York? I, I've just experienced New York. I've worked in New York. I've done theater in New York. I've been on Broadway. I've been on off-Broadway. I've done um, tons of stuff in terms of uh, being active in the city in the animal rights world. And I just really, really love New York. It's my home. It's my, it's, it's my, like, my place, you know, mm. and I just feel very attached to it. Yeah, I was born in the Bronx myself, then Staten Island, but then I left and I went to Vegas, now I'm in Florida. Now, oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> the only two boroughs I didn't live in. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now, what about your background in politics? Have you ever been involved with uh, politically active or servant? I did. Yeah, I have been politically active. People didn't, you know, I've always been like an activist and helped. I tried to help get a lot of animal rights laws passed over the years. I actually worked as a kid. I worked with the Board of Elections, actually, uh, actually the League of Women Voters, to get young people to vote. I was like in charge of that for my high school. You know, for the kids who were turning 18, I was like in charge of sort of like getting them to register. Then I actually did that again later on in my life when I was um, actually about five, the, the 2012-13 elections around that time. Was it 2012? 2012, the registered vote campaign I worked on as well uh, with a, with headcount. And we had the biggest uh, social media registered vote campaign ever. So people that would like see the social media posts and I was in charge of the comics, the comedians, actually. Like, famous comics would tweet out their link for registration. And it was a bipartisan registration to vote campaign. And we registered, like, forty to 50,000 people. It was a big campaign. It was great. Now, now this campaign, this time, you're running on the Libertarian Party ticket. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why the Libertarian? Well, because I really... Their values are just, to me are amazing because you know they believe in less government but yet you can be as liberal as you want or conservative as you want and you're still a libertarian and i think at this point as well um as a libertarian it's what will unite our country Mm. And, and how did this come about you went to them they went to you well i've been a libertarian uh you know, they, they, they promote civil liberties and, you know, they, they had like a lazy over capitalism. I just feel like there's parts of libertarianism that just really spoke to me. And I and I know Larry Sharp, who ran for governor, and I spoke to him about my run. And he's been an integral part of this campaign. And he's actually my senior advisor. So um, I came to I, I spoke to Larry and Larry. And I discussed it, and I decided, yeah, it's a yes. You know, I wanted—I actually said I wanted to run for mayor. And this isn't the first time I announced it, like, 
I announced it like half-heartedly when I was in, on Bob Levy's show back in 2014, believe it or not. So this is something I've been looking at for many years. It's not a new, like, I want to run for mayor because the block. This is not reactionary to the Blasio, but it is, it was the right time for me. You know, I, I actually got to, in the last presidential election. I actually got four write-in votes across the country. <laughs> so, really? You said it. <laughs> I, know, I didn't even. I didn't even think of it. But some people uh, that mentioned they wrote me in. Uh, now, who are you running against? Who 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 are they putting up against you? Well, um, I don't. In terms of the other candidates, right now, I've heard Yang, Yang Andrew Yang, is the Democratic nominee and i think curtis lee might be the republican that's what the rumor you know obviously they have to do uh, a convention you know the yeah. primary so um i don't know when that's going to be for the democrats necessarily i think it's towards the spring but you know i don't know who they're eric adams i heard is one of them Corey johnson might be one of them uh it depends you know i guess Ernest, uh andrew yang seems to be the favorite at this point what i've heard but we'll see and then I, I don't know the Republican Party. I believe it's Curtis Lewa. I've heard a lot about that. Now, now, how could that be? I haven't lived in New York in 20 years, but is he taking that seriously down there that he's actually a serious contender for mayor of New York City? Curtis Lewa? That's, that's what I, I know. I, 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 I actually did a, when I was younger, I was doing this like the sexiest grandma contest where I was like one of the models to hold the signs up and stuff in Brooklyn when we were, when I used to be in that show Grandma Sylvia Funeral and uh, he was one of the judges and I was like 20 years old and he was I don't know how old he was at that point this was like the 90s so hmm. I don't know I, like he's still around yeah and he was that he was like already and, and Hell's Angels they, not Hell's Angels the Guardian not, Angels uh, the Guardian <laughs> sorry, the, excuse me sorry Chuck Zito um, the Guardian Angels um, they they they, you know, they they were like already. Uh, I believe they were already like sort of done. Or, yeah, like or disbanded kind of and, and discredited. 70s. Yeah, yeah. More than the nineteen seventies or eighties, early eighties. They were much prior. They were like done, kind of like not around. So like, he's been around for a long time. And does he still have a radio show in New York? I don't know. I'm okay. not sure. I haven't. I have to. I haven't done my Curtis Lee Watt. Yeah. Uh, I have to be honest to the. I have done my Curtis Lee uh, you know, investigation, but mm-hmm. um, I, I, that's what I know of. I don't know. I, 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 he's been kind of quiet for a while. I he hasn't spoken too much. I mean, I guess the crime has been high in the city, which is another issue uh, that we're going to have to face. I mean, it's gotten bad. You know, supposedly the numbers are ridiculous. The shootings are are very high right now. Uh, it's not a good scene. I suppose, though, that I I think that your number one concern and and what's really on your heart the most is the New York City response to the COVID-19 pandemic. What what have you seen over there that that, that you see that's negative about the way they responded? Well, there's two, you know, this is one of the main uh, issues right now that and this has caused, you know, crime. It's caused poverty. It's caused homelessness, addiction people not taking their meds if they have mental illness that's then that's ending up on the street or and committing crimes you know it's a whole cycle so you know what i've seen is that first of all there's been a very up and down non-consistent response to the virus, to the coronavirus you know in terms of businesses first of all first and foremost like one day we're open, then the numbers go up, and then we close. Then they open and close. Now, I guess in the beginning, a lot of people did not know how to deal with it at all because this is kind of unprecedented. Let's be honest; we haven't had a plague like this since the nineteen, you know, the plague of nineteen eighteen. So uh, I think everyone didn't know what to open. They should close. You know, half the country didn't stayed open. Half the country stayed closed. I mean, it was a really crazy situation. You know, you. In order to get rid of something like this, you you either close for four, you know, for a month or two, whatever, and then you, the whole country closes, and everyone follows, you know, suit, and then you close the borders, and then you eradicate it. That's and that's kind of impossible. Let's be honest; it's like an impossible task to get fifty states to all work together, and especially those states that don't have any numbers, right? So, 
So, so that was probably off the table to begin with. So, you know, in a, I guess a utopian world, 